We hear a lot of worst day stories on Ask Reddit. People with emotionally difficult jobs, police, M's, firefighters, doctors, nurses, therapists, etc. What was your best day on the job? I'm an EMT. And I would say one of my best days was a call we got for a young girl who was feeling suicidal. I will admit. I'm not sure she needed an ambulance. But I spent a lot of time in the back with her. Talking. And she seemed a lot better and happier by the time we got to the hospital. It struck me because it was the first call where I felt like I had truly helped someone with their mental health problems. I still think about her sometimes. And I hope she's doing better. I work physical rehab in a skilled nursing facility. I had a young, early 40s patient with a hereditary degenerative condition who had been in different hospitals and facilities for months. In addition to genuine pain and disability she was being very self-limiting, unwilling to do pretty much anything for fear of it increasing her pain levels. Bit by bit a co-worker and I convinced her to first roll over. Then sit. Then stand. Then spend longer and longer periods out of bed. Finally. We got to the point where we were able to do a home visit. And you could see her remembering what it was like to be in her own space. That light of desire to go home was in her eyes and she worked harder from that point on. And two weeks later she was discharged. Helping her into the car and waving it out of the parking lot was the best feeling I've had so far in my career. TL. DR was able to help someone go from bedridden inpatients to home in a wheelchair after months of painstaking work. Psychologist here. I did my year long internship at a university counseling center. While we normally only saw clients for 8-12 sessions, we were allowed to have one longer term client to give us more experience. Mine ended up being this wonderful young woman who was deeply depressed. She was an identical twin. Sessions were slow going at first and there were a lot of tears. She worked through a lot and she was much better by the end of our 10 months working together. My supervisor and I talked about her frequently and she watched tapes of our sessions. The next year I was on my postdoc and I got a call from my former supervisor who had just started seeing my client's twin in private practice. The mother of the two. Not knowing who my supervisor was started talking to her about how her other daughter had gone to therapy and how her therapist had changed her life. My supervisor called me to tell me this because, as she well knows, we don't get to hear that very often. Policeman in small town. Got a call to try and locate a woman who was on the heart transplant list. She wasn't answering her phone or pager. Early 90s and she didn't have a cell phone. It was in the middle of the night and cold in the middle of February. I knocked on the door of every neighbor on her cul-de-sac without success. Last house on cul-de-sac which was across the street told me she'd gone to her mother's out of town. Was able to get her number and contact her. She got a new heart at night. I'm retired now and still she her on occasion. She always makes a big deal and hugs me. She'd forgotten her pager and didn't go back to get it thinking what are the chances they'll call tonight. I used to work as a janitor in a high school. There were three of us in the school and during the summer break. We were normally given a list of jobs to do. But we were mainly just expected to show up and be on hand if we were needed. This one year. We finished all our work super early into the break. So we had practically nothing to do. One day. I was sitting in a classroom watching movies on my phone. When my friend radioed me and asked me to come to the roof. Bearing in mind we were the only people on staff authorized to access the roof. I went up and walked outside. It was a beautiful. Sunny day. My friend had set up some chairs from a classroom and had a bucket of ice with some beers floating in it. We spent the whole day up on the roof sunbathing and drinking. It was a magic time. I was a teacher in a low income charter school. Which you may recognize as a recipe for disaster. The school was poorly run. We had to provide most supplies ourselves. And had unreasonable and unrealistic expectations placed on us. I was teaching first grade at the time. We had a rule that only one child could be out of the classroom at a time. No matter what. I had 30 kids. Eventually. One of my kids had a bathroom accident. I have to say here. If I knew he had to go that bad. 
I would have let him go rules be damned. He never gave any indication that it was an emergency. He did his best. But first graders have small bladders. I got him a change of clothes and minimized his embarrassment as much as I could. His mom was furious. She came in the next day and spent a solid 10 minutes screaming at me. A dean finally came and escorted her away and I thought that would be the end of it. It wasn't. She stayed at the school the entire day and just watched. She saw what the teachers were going through and what we had to deal with. She came back to me at the end of the day and apologized. She was my biggest supporter from then on and if I needed something. She had it for me. On the day I quit. She hugged me and told me that I was too good for that place and it was her son's last day too. Obviously. I've had better days than that in my career. But that was a day that gave me hope and helped me not give up my career due to one bad school. Paramedic here. My best ever job was on a hot summer's day in Australia. We were called to an 11 year old boy that had drowned in his family pool. I was halfway through a foot long meatball sub when it happened and damn near sheet myself. We were about 5 minutes away. And when we arrived the boy's mother was providing CPR while his 8 year old twin sisters watched on. Horrified. I checked the carotid pulse, non-existent, and started to take over on compressions. My partner started to unpack the defib pads while our student toweled the kid off. Defib comes back showing ventricular tachycardia, one of the only two shockable rhythms. So we hit him with the lightning and he instantly went back into a sinus rhythm, normal heart rhythm. Kid then began to splutter. We rolled in him into the recovery position to help him get the water out of his lungs. In such a high octane situation. It honestly felt so good to be able to successfully revive somebody. I still think about that job anytime that I wonder why I'm in this profession. Got a call for a grass fire on a red flag warning day. Took us about 30 minutes to get there and there was already another type 6, pickup truck plus water tank, engine and a J5, tracked fire vehicle, on site. 20-30 FT flame lengths and spreading fairly quickly threatening a home and a cabin. Homeowner evacuated with her dogs and we started hitting the fire with the J5S and got a helicopter and two planes in the air to defend the house. And more engines on the way. All in all it was about 10 hours of chasing this thing through grass and swamp and cold trailing before it was declared out. Homeowner returned later in the day in tears hugging everyone despite how filthy we were and wouldn't let anyone leave as she had ordered a bunch of food for us was my first wildfire experience interacting with someone who our work had directly affected and it was a super feel good moment. This will probably be buried. But cardiac nurse chiming in here. I had a patient who unexpectedly needed an open heart surgery to bypass clogged arteries. He said he had things to take care of at home and was threatening to leave against medical advice. Which would likely disqualify him from the surgery or delay it immensely. I convinced him to stay for one more day to talk to the doctors and then help to set up a plan for him to get all of the pre-surgical tests as an outpatient. Therefore letting him take care of his personal obligations. He walked back over to my floor from the IQ a month later and a couple of days after his surgery. Saw me. And started crying. He hugged me and said that I saved his life and he wouldn't have done the surgery if I didn't convince him to stay. Probably the most inspiring moment so far Jay in my short nursing career. Whenever I have a hard day I think about this guy and it makes me remember why I do what I do. Honestly. I think he helped me as much as I helped him. It's a great question and not one I've actually thought much about before. My best day on the street was probably when I successfully performed the Heimlich maneuver on a woman who was choking. She was actually a chronic caller who was trying to build up a case for a lawsuit against her kid's school so we were talking to her outside with the principal when suddenly she just stops talking and grabs her throat. What they say is true that when you are really choking you can't make a sound. Her airway was 100% blocked. She collapsed onto the ground and I needed to lift her up to start the Heimlich. After about the third or fourth thrust the hard candy she was choking on comes flying out of her mouth and she vomits everywhere. But was able to breathe again. For anyone who's in that position my main takeaway was that you need to thrust really hard. Like way harder than I expected. Anyway. She ended up thanking me profusely and never made another complaint against the school.
It was a really surreal experience all around and the only time I can legitimately say that I've saved someone's life. I was in the use of station on Guam when MT. Pinatubo erupted in 1991. They did an evacuation. Operation Fiery Vigil. To get all of our people possible to safety. A lot of them at least came through Anderson AFB on their way back to the states. Because of my job. I was basically sleeping at work on the floor a couple hours here and there while people were processing. As were many others. With the huge sudden influx of people arriving. Space was very limited. And people were sleeping wherever. It was rough for single airmen. But for families that had any kids. It was kinda a nightmare in some ways. I was fortunate enough to live off base and be able to offer my apartment to a fellow airman who came through with his wife and young child. I just randomly picked them because they were going to be stuck for a couple days before heading Konus and I felt like a small kid didn't need to be around all the chaos that was going on. I took them to my place. Gave them the keys. Told them to eat and use whatever they needed. And offered them the maybe hundred bucks I had squirreled away in the cupboard for an emergency. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. And it's not saving a life or anything huge like that. But for a couple days I was able to give one family that had their lives turned upside down a little break. And I got lots of cool little hand tracings and scribbles to put on my fridge their son left behind for me and a reason to feel good about myself for at least a little while. I don't know if it was the best day ever. But I had a little 3 year old girl with language development disorder. So she didn't speak but tried to use self invented sign language to communicate. It's incredibly hard on a child to have a handicap that is not properly diagnosed and an environment that isn't appropriately attuned to it. I was able to find a good communication mode with her and we played. I did some developmental testing. At the end of the appointment we walked towards the door together with the parents to say goodbye and she hugged my leg as she didn't want to leave me. My heart melted. I'm a crisis counselor and negotiator for a police department. The morning of this day. I got accepted to PA school. It was such a joyous occasion. My first case at work was a kid who was hanging off the edge of a tall building. I remember walking up and thinking not today. We talked for several hours. We talked about important things and small things. Eventually. He came back over the ledge and I was able to shake his hand. This job can come with some very bad days. But that day I walked away from there feeling so fulfilled. That was my best day. We had a wedding. Back in the 1980s. Outpatient George was dying of an aggressive cancer. He and his significant other Martha had been together for 46 years. They had lived as husband and wife and raised a family. With Martha being a stay at home mom and homemaker. As was common back then. An LPN was giving her a lift home and learned that they were never legally married. Martha would have no rights as his to his pension as surviving spouse. Or social security, was too late, or as a spouse inheriting the house. The social worker confirmed there was no common law marriage. So we planned a wedding right there in the hospital. George's doctor signed the forms saying he could not appear to obtain the license. And someone took Martha to get the license. We all pitched in to get rings and some flowers. One of the nurses brought a little white fascinator for Martha to wear. We had some recorded music. The hospital chaplain performed the ceremony. The wedding was joyful event in a sad situation. I'm a swallow therapist. Had a patient in the hospital with a severe stroke and in a hard cervical collar. Swallow was horrible. After the swallow x-ray I made recommendations of honey thick liquids and puri solids. Swallow was so impaired that he was aspirating normal and nectar thick liquids. Comma I hate this part of my job. The patient was understandably upset about it and all he wanted at that time was to drink some water. He came back to the hospital after having a fall at rehab. About a week after I last saw him. I said hey. You're actually looking a lot better. Let's repeat that swallow x-ray and see how it's going now. Double quote. Swallow was way improved. I gave him the good news that his swallow was so much better. I recommend he advances to soft solids and thin, normal, liquids. You mean I can have water again? He yelled. Yep. And normal coffee too. 
He had the biggest lip quivering smile and tears in his eyes and sheer happiness at being able to drink normal liquids again. He was so happy and thankful. It's moments like those that I hang on to. To keep me going in this field. This sounds fucked up. But one of my absolute best moments was taking care of one of my friends, a police officer, after he was hit in a gunfight. Paramedics usually wait at shootings until the scene is secured before going in. I said FCK that. I rolled in and stabilized him while my crew caught up in the ambulance. As I was working on him the other cop mentioned that there were casualties in the house. Since he was stable I went in to see what I could do for the others. The perp was handcuffed face down. Obviously dead. The other person in the house had been hit multiple times. So I got to work. She lived. I found out later that there was a bomb in the room 5 feet away from where I'd been taking care of her. Unlike a lot of the other intense calls in my career, many of which haunt my nightmares. Being the first medic and to take care of a friend in a terrible situation felt really good. It made all of the horrible shit I'd been through before worth it. I didn't have the most difficult job. But I worked in a witchcraft supply shop in Salem MA during Halloween season. So it was extremely busy and we were severely understaffed. It was stressful and I worked way longer hours than I should have. But overall I really enjoyed it. Anyways the best memory I have of that place was a woman came into the shop on a really quiet morning, unusually quiet for October. Because of this. I was able to chat with her. Ask her where she's from. All that good retail small talk. She was looking at a dragonfly dream catcher and mentioned how she had to buy it because her late daughter collected dragonfly things. She started talking about her daughter and how this was one of the first vacations she had taken since her daughter passed. I could feel her sadness when she talked to me. But she was smiling and so gentle and sweet. I don't know what came over me. But I got a rose quartz crystal from the back and brought it out to her and said something along the lines of this stone symbolizes love. Your daughter may not be with you. But she loves you so much. And I think you should have this and I gave her the stone. We held hands and both cried a little. And then afterwards we were like well that was weird. I still can't think about her without tearing up a little. I hope she's doing alright wherever she is. Pete Doc here. I think I have two best days. These were ones where I felt like I directly saved those patients lives. The first was a resuscitation and I got a cannula in quickly, others had failed, and the patient responded really well to the IV adrenaline. The other was recently. I was at a delivery where the baby breathed in meconium, baby poo, and I resuscitated her. She was really sick for a couple of days but went home well at around 10 days old. There are lots of good moments. Like when you can see a parent's gratitude because you've helped their kid. Or mastered a tough procedure like a neonatal intubation or a clean lumbar puncture on a cranky toddler. I am a cardiovascular technologist in a cardiac cath lab. We had the sweetest ATU female patient come in with a massive saddle pay. She was stable in the IQ. Only requiring 6 elmen on a nasal cannula. Despite her massive pay. We brought her back for intra-arterial thrombolysis and she coded on our table. We did CPR. We intubated her. We were able to give her the TPA to break up her pay before we had to get her into the IQ. We took her to the IQ and stood in the room as her husband came in and saw her while the physician explained what happened and what the plan would be at the time. Once the doctor left. The husband told me. Tears streaming all the while. A powerful story about his experience with miracles and his belief in God. The intensivist was not optimistic about our patient's prognosis. But our interventionalist was. Slowly she began to improve. And two days later. I saw her sitting up. Extubated. And joking with her husband. She thanked us for everything we did. And her husband did the same with tears in his eyes. I've never felt so bonded with a patient. And I will never forget the look of eternal gratefulness in their faces. Especially the husbands. It had still been the most rewarding day of my career. I was working at a retail store two summers ago. It was a trendy place where only attractive Instagram model types were hired. Not sure how I got the job with that criteria. One day Gwyneth Paltrow came into shop with her daughter and told me I'll love your outfit. 
she didn't really talk to compliment anyone else. I really appreciated it because out of all the other people that worked there. I would say I struggled the most financially. Everyone was younger and either living at home or got substantial help from their parents and lived on their own. Traveled all the time. Always bought new clothes. Partied. While I am putting myself through school with no help and paying rent. And some days I could hardly pay the transportation to get to work. It might sound superficial. But I thought it was really funny that a millionaire told me that I looked well put together even though I was like struggling to feed myself at the time. I'm a nurse. I had a patient that was very sick. She was passing out in bathrooms and having a lot of GI issues. Turns out. These symptoms were because her heart wasn't beating fast enough and she needed a pacemaker. Unbeknownst to me. Someone took her to the bathroom. A physical therapist called me frantically that she needed help. I went in and she was pale. Diaphoretic. Really low blood pressures. Her heart rhythm went crazy and she passed out on the toilet. This was a big lady but we somehow managed to get her onto the floor. Stabilize her. Get her up and into bed. She went down for a pacemaker shortly thereafter. She didn't come back to our floor. But she made her new nurse call me from her procedural unit to tell me we I saved her life and she wanted me to know how much better she felt with the pacemaker and how thankful she was. On my unit we have very few good outcomes. To this day. I think this was the best one. It was amazing that she took the time to have her new nurse call me and tell me that. I didn't save her life. We all did. But it was the first time I felt like I had a part to play in a very happy outcome. Had a summer job selling ice cream. We had a little boy with autism come in with his family and later freaked out because the different flavors touched so we gave him a scoop of strawberry ice cream free of charge. He later comes up to me and my friend. I was at the cash register, asking for an extra spoon. We always keep a few extra spoons in the pockets on our aprons. So I did some magic and made a spoon appear in my hand. He couldn't see the lower half of me because of the wall. And when I gave him the spoon he had the biggest smile I've ever seen and ran away to his mom yelling she can do magic. Over and over. Melted me and my friend's hearts. Had another kid come up to me while I was taking an order tugging on my apron to get my attention. So when I was done with the order I crouched down to see what she wanted. And she said. I didn't know your name but I wanted to give you this anyway. She held out a drawing of a person at the cash register with a text to someone. From Beth. Fake name. Such sweethearts. I love that place. I've been a hospice palliative care chaplain for 9 years now and I work with only dying people all day. Every day. The best days on the job are seeing someone have a good death. Seeing the patients surrounded by family and realizing how truly loved they are and also giving their loved ones meaningful words and time together in return. Seeing family reconciliations happen when there's been an estrangement is beautiful. It's also so meaningful when I can help patients create legacy work for their loved ones so they'll have tangible items once the person has died. It's a great day too to see patients kept completely comfortable so they can die peacefully and asymptomatically. It's also profoundly humbling to have a patient or loved one say that the emotional, spiritual, or psychological support I've given has helped with their comfort. And during the quiet times in the staff area. Making dark and perverted jokes with the nurses is all the levity needed to be uplifted with humor. I'm truly honored to have the best job in the world. I used to be a firefighter in my small town. One night we were all hanging out at the station after dinner when this guy comes in with his two kids and their family dog. Apparently the dog had somehow gotten into a thing of rat poison and ate the entire container. She was unconscious and having bouts of seizures. We don't have any emergency vets near us, rural county, and the ones that do require you to be a regular of theirs. He was hoping there was something we could give her. At least until they made the 45 minute drive to the nearest vet. Luckily we always kept a paramedic on duty and he also happened to be a captain on the department. It was absolutely against both the rules of the debt and possibly against the law for him to use our meds in that way. Especially on a dog. But he gave her something through an IV to try and slow the poison. I don't know what it was. 
but a few weeks later they sent us a really nice card and said the vet told them she wouldn't have made it without the medication our captain gave her. I still have that card, I think they sent each of us one. It's got a really cute picture of her on it. You don't get the opportunity to actually save lives that often as an EMT firefighter. Just the reality of the job, especially in a small rural community. So that one was really special. Not actually the job but a part of it. It also counts as a work day according to payroll so I count it. I work in oil exploration on international project sites so I have to fly overseas to and from work sites every 6 weeks or so. Slight problem. I have a fear of flying. Specifically turbulence. One time was heading back from work and had a 12 hour flight across the North Atlantic in winter to get home. For those not familiar. Winter is the worst to fly that far north due to turbulence from the jet stream so I was dreading that flight. Whole flight went by without even a bump. Also. Got upgraded to business for free and the airline had Mars attacks on the EFE system. Best of all. Was going home for 6 weeks of break. My favorite work day so far. During my time as a student teacher I was reading a fairly boring article about Aztec people I think. To make it not so boring for the kids and so they would listen more I stopped every now and then and added in extra details and compared things to examples of real life so they could have a better understanding of what was happening. All of the kids were absolutely silent the entire time and staring at me. When I finished the article a few of the kids started clapping like they had just seen a play or something. They stopped really quickly and looked a little embarrassed but I don't think I have ever felt so good. Every single student was asking questions and engaged and it just made me feel so good. I've never felt so great about something before. I'm a newly qualified nurse. My first placement in Niku. We had a very sick baby who I was told was most likely to die at 2 years old. Her mum couldn't understand why she was there as she was a term baby. I'd been doing research and I tried my best to explain to her mum exactly what was happening and be a support. On my last day her mum hugged me and said thank you I was very close to Taz. I follow a photographer on Instagram who had take pictures of this baby girl for her second birthday. It was that baby. It still makes me so proud that she defied all odds. She has cerebral palsy and global developmental delay but she has surpassed everyone's expectations and is able to eat herself. Nothing makes me prouder than seeing her thrive. I used to work at an animal shelter and honestly had a lot of good days to pair with the bad ones. One of the coolest things I can remember happening was a family came looking to adopt a cat. We had a cat that was having a tough time getting adopted so he got to roam free in the shelter to schmooze with people. Well this family encounters the cat and they don't just fall in love. They had a huge sigh of relief. The shelter cat was their cat that went missing 5 years beforehand. They instantly recognized him and immediately readopted him. It was a really neat twist of fate. 